inspiration for Tortured Memories, it didn't start out being called Tortured Memories, um, but after I had recorded this series of sounds, that's what it evoked. I've been a musician all my life, and I have a, a, a really large collection of musical instruments, and they have been the targets, the fodder for a lot of sound design experimentation in the movies that I've made. I mean, I've turned tubas into spaceships and, and wind wands into helicopters. And, and I, I realized that as I was designing those sounds for other movies in the past, there were always moments when I was not doing something musical with the musical instrument that created this just alien texture, this just weird sound that made me feel a certain way. And I decided that I wanted to build a library by abusing musical instruments or at least using them in ways that they were not intended. And that's a, a good deal of the sounds in this library started life as my manipulation of a musical instrument to make it do something it wasn't supposed to do. Now, some of them are raw right out of the box. Some of them are heavily processed with reverb and delay and equalization to give them an even more dreamlike or, or maybe unsettling characteristic. That, I love that recording. I can't remember if that is my flute or my shakuhachi. Does it say? It says a call from the past. Oh, then that's a flute. And uh, yeah, that I gave all of these sounds very poetic names because when I hear that sound, all I did was record for a year and then built this library and then reviewed it a year later and thought, well, how does that make me feel? And that was, the, if I heard that sound in, in a movie, I would think, that's my long deceased ancestor wanting to communicate with me and tell me something. So that's why I gave it that name. It's called Angry Sneakers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was... Um, me abusing the strings on my grand piano. I think those are metallic scrapes across the bass strings, which have these very, very deep ridges in them. They're like serrated. And so, you, you know, you scrape, but you get that great zing kind of sound and then a, a really rich, deep reverb. <laughs> I love this one. You know, it's been a couple of years. That's either me tapping on the bout of my guitar and micing inside the sound hole to get a little kind of acoustic resonance, or it's me tapping on the side of the piano. It's definitely a, a wooden surface with a very soft either mallet or my finger just going tick, 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 tick. It's called Teardrops. That might have been from the piano abuse session. <laughs> I think that was the, that might, have, I think that's a mallet on the side of the, a soft mallet on the side of the piano. Yeah, thou, I believe those are cello groans. That's you know, heavily, heavily rosining a bow, and then tuning down the fourth string to to you know an octave below what it normally is, so that you get a lot of vibration on this. It gets it wobbles a lot, and just dragging the bow across the string, and you just get that kind of grinding, woody, almost um, almost like a like a horn it sounds more to me like a 
like um, a foghorn. That's uh, what it's called, Valhalla foghorns. Oh, the, those those are the cello groans. Yeah, it was amazing to think that a stringed instrument also is transported into this other realm of the of the orchestral universe, depending on how you mic it and how you uh, manipulate it. This group of sounds are going to be, I think, really useful anytime you have a dream sequence or, you know, or a nightmare moment or a horror sequence. These, these are great at building tension or dread or even sadness. There's, there's, a, there's a deep component of long, rich reverbs that just feel like you're, you're in the past for some reason and something's come to speak to you or, or, or to haunt you. That's sort of the, the first uh, instinct, I think, for these sounds is to use them for those non-diegetic moments, sounds that evoke a feeling and they have nothing to do with what you're seeing on screen. A lot of this was using instruments in ways they're not meant to be used. So I have this really cool um, magnetic vibrator um, that I would put on stringed instruments, and the magnets cause the, um, the strings to vibrate in an unusual drone. Those were kind of cool. And I did a lot of processing sounds through things. So I have this gigantic sousaphone. You know, it's like a tuba, but with a bell this big. A sousaphone is the tuba you use in a marching band. So I would play sounds in the mouthpiece end, like I'd put a little teeny speaker in the mouthpiece, and then process it through the tuba, and then record it at the bell. So I wasn't actually playing the, the sousaphone. I was using it as, a, uh, as like an environment to process sounds through. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I did that with a didgeridoo. We, I had a lot of fun. I taught myself to at least breathe a didgeridoo. I'm not a player. And we, I did a lot of that, too, where I would put sound sources at one end of the didgeridoo and get that kind of pitched. I had a didgeridoo in the key of D, and so everything that came out had the D resonance on top of it, making a non-tonal or musical sound suddenly tonal by processing through the device or the, the instrument. 